if you would go ahead and open up your Bibles. What we're going to do is we're going to sing it one time through. And uh, y'all need to follow along because then after that you guys are going to stand up and sing it with us the second time through. So the verse is Psalm 18 verse 3 and then the chorus is Psalm 18 verse 46. You guys start that. I will call upon the Lord and call upon the Lord. salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. All right, go ahead and stand, and uh, we'll try it all together. All right. I will call upon the Lord, Where's my young man that's going to get my water there for me? All right. If you're glad you're saved, say amen. amen. All right. Now, I, uh, I got to find my uh, message this morning, what I'm going to preach on. I'm going to preach on uh, instant, instant salvation. Instant salvation. We had a young, uh, not a young fella, an old fella that was here at the services. He got saved uh, at 50, anybody know how old he was when he got saved? 50 what? 59. 59 years old. He got saved this week. This week at 59. Man, that, yeah, that's a blessing, isn't it? That's a blessing, boy. 59. Uh, you need to write down this message for him because this is who I'm preaching at. He's not here, but that's usually the way it goes. You usually preach a message to a guy that's not there, don't you? Uh, and get it for him. But I'm going to preach on instant salvation. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before the throne room this morning, asking for your grace and asking for your mercy, Father. And Father, we never get tired hearing the Word of God, and it's precious to us. And, uh, Lord, I thank you for the precious book that the uh, word the young man gave me this morning. And it was a blessing to my soul. And, Lord, I pray by the grace of God, the mercy of God, we would put it on to others. And, Lord, I pray this morning you give me a clear mind. And, Lord, if there's somebody here today that's lost and on the road to hell, Father, I pray that you'd please open up their heart. And may today be the day of salvation, Father. Please don't let them go to hell, Lord. And, Thank you for this uh, 59-year-old man that got saved this week. And, Lord, thank you that he knows he's saved. And, Lord, I pray that you would watch over him right now. I pray you protect him, keep the devil away from him, Father. And, Lord, help him to get some victory over some sins in his life. And, Lord, use him, Father, in Jesus' name I pray. And for his sake, amen. Now, I want you to write down my message tonight. Uh, this morning. It's called Instant salvation. Now take your Bible and turn. I want to show you how easy it is to get saved, and I want to show you that salvation is instant. Take your Bible and turn to the Gospel of Luke, 
and uh, see how instant salvation is. Instant salvation. Turn to the Gospel of Luke and turn to Luke uh, chapter uh, 23, uh, uh, chapter 23, and let's begin in instant salvation. Let's begin in verse 39. You with me? Say amen. amen. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we received the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest unto thy kingdom." So Jesus Christ is dying on the cross of Calvary and he's hanging there. And then the thief on the one side looks over there to Jesus and he says, Lord, remember me when thou comest unto thy kingdom. Now I want to show you how instant it was. Look at the next verse. Verse says in verse 42, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Verse 43, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in what? See how instant it was? He didn't get baptized. He didn't join in the church. He didn't sing in the choir. He got saved In a moment of time, just like that, that man went from hell to heaven hanging on the cross of Calvary, and he did absolutely nothing to get saved. All he did was turn his head and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. How many of you believe that thief is now in the presence of Jesus Christ up in heaven? Say amen. That is instant salvation. Salvation is really, really easy. If salvation is so easy, why do folk, more folks not get saved? If it's so easy, the devil wants to damn them. Say amen. Right. And the Christians are afraid. But it's so easy to be saved. As simple as pie. Uh, as simple as eating a piece of cherry pie. <laughs> All right, take your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John and let's see it again. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And here is a a great verse on how easy and simple salvation is. John chapter 3 and verse 3 says, Jesus said unto, uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born, what? Again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then salvation is easy as just being born again, just like that. You got, you come along like that, go along one day, and all of a sudden you experience a new birth. Somebody gave you a gospel track. Somebody preached to you. You was in a church somewhere, and you had that experience of receiving the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and life and soul, and everything from that point changed. Say amen. amen. Everything from that point changed. So, salvation is very easy. It's very simple. But yet, men try to make it very difficult and very hard. It's very easy for a man to get saved. We as gospel preachers, we get up and preach, and we're constantly trying to get somebody to walk down the aisle and get saved. It's very, very simple. And I'm going to give you some illustrations what how easy... Uh, salvation is in the Bible, and I'm going to give you seven of them, and I want you to write down the first one, number one. Salvation is easy as this right here. Are you with me? Now, everybody watch. Salvation is this easy. It's like opening a door and going through a door. Is that easy? 
That's how easy salvation is. Now, I want to prove that to you from the Bible. Take your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John and show you how easy it is. John chapter 10, and look at verse 9. Salvation as easy as going through a door. The Gospel of John, John chapter 10, and let's pick up verse 9. If you're with me, say amen. Amen. Let's pick up verse 9. Salvation is as easy as going and walking through a door. And it says in John chapter 10 verse 9, I am the what? The door. By, now underline the next words, by me. If any man will enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Then Jesus Christ says, I'm the door. And if a man will enter in, you got to go through the door. Who's the door? The door is Jesus Christ. Now, how is Jesus Christ the door? And that's the door to heaven, by the way. Say amen. You've already went through the door of heaven. Well, how is that? Jesus Christ died in the cross of Calvary. They put a nail in this hand. They put a nail in that hand. They put a crown of thorns around his head. They put a spear in his side. And he hung there on the cross, and then he died. What did he die for? My sins. One fellow said, my sins. Now I want everybody to say, my sins. That's what he died for on the cross of Calvary. And then was buried and rose again from the dead. How many of you believe Jesus Christ come back from the dead? Amen. You say, you got to believe that. That's part of what you have to believe in the instant salvation. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Now put a period right there. Jesus Christ died for your sins was buried and rose again. Period. 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 Put your period. Now draw you a cross. I have at home, draw you a little cross on your piece of paper there. Draw you a little cross. Put a little arrow that goes down there like that, and then bring it back out of the grave like that, and then put a period right there. On the side of my truck over at home, I got a, 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 a 2003 Ford pickup with repent on the tailgate in letters about this big (laughs) and running across the tailgate down on the east side I have three crosses on a mountain and has an arrow that comes down there up there like that and a period after it you know what all America believes they believe Jesus died for your sins was buried and rose again they do not put a period there they say that's true all Mormons believe that's true Roman Catholics say, that's true. All Jehovah's Witnesses say, that's true. But the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and the Roman Catholics and a a thousand other people do not put a period there. They do not put a period there. They say, that's true. I believe that he died for me. I believe that he died for my sins. He was buried and he rose from the grave. But, You have to be baptized. You have to join my church. You have to become my religion. And they've taken millions of people to hell by their baptism. And you say, preacher, I want all you to say amen. 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 You say, that's the truth. He died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Period. Period. Put a period there. Don't add to the gospel. Salvation is simple. You all you have to do is believe that he died for your sins on the cross of Calvary. You can do that in less than five minutes. You can do that right here at this altar. You can bow your head and bow your heart and say, Oh God, I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save my soul from hell. That's instant salvation. But you've got to put a period there, or it's not even salvation. If you say, well, preacher, I got baptized. I joined the church. I sing. If I come by your house, I may never do this, but if I come by your house and knock on your door and come up to you and say, oh, uh, are you going to heaven when you die? You say, yeah, preacher, I'm going to heaven when I die. 
good where you're trusting in. Don't you say, I belong to Bible, Bible Believers Baptist Church. You know why? That's the wrong answer. If I knock on your door, I knock on your door and say, are you going to heaven when you die? You say, yes. Don't you say, I live a good life. I live a good life. I, I'm working at it. If any one of you say that you're working at it, I'm going to tell the preacher. You're not working at it. He worked at it. All the work has been done in the cross of Calvary. He died for your sins, was buried, and rose again to save your soul. Period. 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 Put a period there. And if you don't put a period there, it's not instant salvation at all. It's religion is what it is. Because then you're just going on that religion. That won't save anybody. All right? Number one, uh, number two, it's like going through a door. Number two, it's like doing this right here. Are you watching? Ah, man, that's good. It's like drinking a glass of water. Was that difficult? Was that hard? Was that difficult? Was that confusing? It was a very, very simple. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and look at verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. It's like drinking a glass of water. It's as easy as drinking a glass of water. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, it says, For by one Spirit... Are we all baptized into one body? That's a baptism of the Holy Spirit now, not water. Into one body. Whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made, now watch it, to what? Drink unto one spirit. Drink unto one spirit. It's like drinking a glass of water just like that. Just like drinking the it's that simple, that easy. Then you ought to win you some souls to Jesus Christ. Win you some souls. It's easy like drinking. You say drinking in the Spirit. You know what the problem is? is the problem is this. People say, well, drink of the Spirit, then I must, I must feel something when that thing takes place. They, they're thinking that. That's what they think. Oh, I know that if I get saved, I'll just feel something. Now, how many of you cried when you walked down this aisle to get How many got saved in this church? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Uh, or some other church. All right, some other church. Okay, a few more. All right. Did you walk down the aisle and ball when you got saved? Did any of you walk down the aisle ball and, and, and cry and ball when you got saved? I got a guy saved in my church, and I got to preaching on salvation. He stood up and started bawling right there, and he was a grown man of about 28 years old, and he walked down and he ran down the aisle bawling. Did he, does everybody have to bawl and cry when they get saved? Can a guy just, how many of you just sit there, bowed your head, Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you and trusted in His death, burial, and resurrection and felt very little. Now, you folks didn't feel anything. I believe you're saved. I felt something. I did. I really felt something. But you don't have to feel something to be saved. Feeling something is not salvation. You drink Unto the Spirit. Drink unto the Spirit. And it happened just like that. Simple. Easy. Feeling absolutely some folks nothing. I've seen folks cry. I've seen folks laugh. I've seen folks that are just... <laughs> like that. And I really believe they got saved. Salvation is not a feeling. It's simple and easy as drinking a glass of water. 
That's why as gospel preachers, you know what we do? We give an invitation to walk that aisle and come down front and get saved and be born again. You say, what does that do for a man? It does something for him that you can't describe because when he gets up out of that seat, he is scared to death. And he walks down that aisle and he's scared to death walking down that aisle. You know why they're so scared to walk the aisle? I'll tell you why they're so scared to walk the aisle is this thing here. Well, everybody else thinks that uh, uh, I walk down that aisle, I'm going to say I'm a sinner deserving to go to hell. But you know that, you know, you don't have to worry about that because you know what everybody else is thinking? Boy, if he would just walk that aisle, what a joy I would have. Boy, how great that would be to my soul if he would walk that aisle. And you know, a lot of them are thinking, well, if I wasn't saved, I'd sure like to get saved today. Right? Then if you're here this morning and you've never been saved, every man and woman and soul is praying that you'll get up and walk that aisle. Don't you be afraid of nothing. Come on! Come on! Come on! Jesus into the saving business. He'll save you in a heartbeat if you'll come. Salvation is simple. It is at a moment of time. It happens just like that. It's like receiving a gift. Now, I have a gift in my pocket. You folks are awful slow. I've got a gift in my pocket. You, you want it? There you go. Come on, brother. You got it. I got a gift in my pocket. Are you folks listening and watching? Right there is your gift. That's your gift. That's your gift. Thank you, brother. Now give me a hundred dollars for it. Now, salvation's free, isn't it? Is salvation free? If you give God God a hundred dollars for it, it ain't free anymore. Now, did you get it? Did you get it? If he gives me a hundred dollars for it, he bought the watch. He didn't. He didn't get it free. Say amen. amen. If he gives me ten cents for it, it's not free. Over television, they say we want to send you this free gift. Just give us an offering of fifty bucks. <laughs> it ain't free. It ain't free. My Bible says salvation is like receiving a free gift. Free for the asking. All you have to do is ask. That's all you got to do is ask. Free, free, free. Now let me show you. Turn to Romans chapter 5 and look at verse 15. Turn to Romans and turn to Romans chapter 5 and look at verse 15. Notice what it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 15. Right in Romans chapter 5, right there in the middle of the verse, underline the word free gift with your pen. Romans 5, 15. Free gift. Skip down to verse 16. Write down free gift in verse 16. Skip down to verse 18. Underline free gift. So it says free gift, free gift. Free gift. Then salvation is a free gift. Now look at verse 17. Right in the middle of verse 17 it says, They which receive. They, right there in the middle of verse 17. They which do what? Receive. Then Jesus Christ paid for your salvation on the cross of Calvary. He died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. His death is in a substitutionary death. He died in your place. That's substitutionary. That means you ought to have died there, but He died there. And that's His part. His part is complete. But you have a part. And your part is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's your part. As many as do what? Receive the gift. 
Now look at here. If you're saved by being baptized, if you're saved by joining a church, if you're saved by singing in the choir, if you're saved by faith and works, then it's not free anymore. Then you can't trust your baptism. You can't trust your good works. You can't live it. It's free. He lived it all. Say amen. Amen. Then it's free. Come get a free... It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. Oh, underneath the tree are all these presents. And there are just lots of them out there. And your children run in. And they say, Oh! And you say, you got to pay for that one. <laughs> and that one's going to cost you big bucks. Come on, you don't do that. Say amen. amen. They're free. All they have to do is open them up and take them. It's Christmas time today. Come and get Jesus. And a guy sits there and sits there and sits there and sits there and gets up and walks out the aisle lost and on the road to hell. Because he wouldn't receive a free gift that's completely paid for. Lock, stock, and barrel. You can't imagine it. You don't know why. It's that thing of inside saying, I'm a sinner and I don't want to tell nobody I'm a sinner going to hell. Don't call me a sinner, preacher. I'm okay. You're a sinner on the road to hell and you're going to burn in hell forever if you don't receive a free gift. It's that simple. They get mad at you. Well, it's because they want to be good instead of what they really are. Salvation is like taking a step. Salvation is like taking a step. Like like that right there. How does you have to? You know what God do? God save you if you just stand up and take a step. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven when I die. I ought to go to hell. I deserve to go to hell. And I'm probably going to go there. I don't think I'm going to go. I think I'll trust in who that man, Jesus. You say, is that easy? Man, is that easy. Take your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 and watch how quick these people got saved. In Romans it says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen? says that in Acts chapter 16. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Watch this in Acts chapter 10. Watch how quick this man got saved. And a whole bunch of them got saved. And how fast and how quick it was by simply believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10. Are you with me? i got to get there. Acts chapter 10, verse 43. I know it's there. Uh, Acts chapter 10, and let's pick up verse 43. And verse 43 says, And he gave all the prophets witness. Are you all with me? In Acts chapter 10, verse 43, say amen. amen. To him gave all the prophets witness that... Now, underline it right here, because here's salvation taking place with all those people. They got saved right at this thing here. Through His name, whosoever believeth on Him shall receive remission of sins. That's Simon Peter preaching to Cornelius. And right there, when he preaches that, right in the middle of his breathing, and he's getting ready to take another breath... Those folks believed and got saved. Verse 43. While Peter yet spake, see he's in the middle of his message. While Peter yet spake uh, these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that did what? Heard the word. So down came the Holy Spirit, like on the day of Pentecost. And they all started to speak in tongues. They got saved right there immediately. And they didn't even move. And all of a sudden, to show all those Jews there that the Gentiles had gotten saved, because the Jews thought that Gentiles couldn't get saved, and to show the Jews that the Gentiles could save, the Holy Spirit come down 
and had those Gentiles speak in tongues just like the Jews spoke in tongues in Acts chapter 2. Proven that they had received the Holy Spirit and they weren't baptized in water. Y'all with me? Say amen. How long did it take them to get saved? Instant salvation. Instant salvation. It was like taking a step. Just like that. You can take a step this morning, stand up, step out there and walk down this aisle and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and get off the road to hell and get on the road to heaven just like that by taking a simple step. If you will. If you will. All right? It is like, it is like, a. it's like this. It's like this. I will find you what it's like. It's like, are you watching? It's like putting on, flipping on a light. Like coming on. It's just like a light switch being flipped on, just like that. Here's a guy walking in darkness, and all of a sudden, the light comes on. It's as easy as flipping on a light switch. Easy as flipping on a light switch. Now you say, where on earth did you get that in the Bible? Well, there's quite a few places. But I want you to take and look at this here place, Acts chapter 26, verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. It's like flipping on a light switch. Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. Now, uh, let me see, Acts chapter 26, verse 18. To open their eyes. Now, everybody look for a minute. I'm going to get that first part of the verse. Open your eyes. Salvation is like what? (laughs) Now, you know, that's instant salvation. It's like a man was blind. It said, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine into them. Then it's like putting on a light switch. It's like all of a sudden... I I see. And if it's that simple, and it is, no doubt about it, it is, why don't more folks just say yes to the Lord and stand up and come down the aisle and get saved? Now, look at it again. Acts chapter uh, 26, verse 18. To open their eyes, now watch it, and to turn them from what? Darkness to light. See how quick it is? Darkness to light, just like that, flipping on the light switch. Darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive what? Forgiveness of what? One more time, receive forgiveness of what? That means all your sins are forgiven, and you never hit the water. All, all, all your sins are forgiven that you've sinned against God. And God will say, I'll forgive all your sins. You mean all of them? That lie, that thing I stole, that thing over there and that thing over there. You mean to preach her that God will forgive me of all my sins? All of them. Lock, stock, and barrel. Isn't it a wonderful thing that you can come down this aisle, bow your head and say, Lord, I'm guilty. I ought to go to hell. My sins are many. Will you please forgive me? And the Lord says, forgiven and forgotten. And you can stand up and walk out that aisle with a conscience that God Almighty has forgiven you of all those sins against Him, and you are absolutely guilty, but forgiven by God. Woo! That's a great and mighty thing! And you can have it. You can have it right now. You can have it this morning. It's done! But you got to do your part. No good without you doing your part. And that is to bow you say, Oh, preacher, do I have to do my part? God won't save you against your will. God won't save you if you don't do your part. 
God will let you go to hell without you doing your part. Now, will you do your part? Every eye closed and every head bowed. You must submit to God and say, yes, I will. Free, sins forgiven, on the road to heaven. But you must say yes to God. With every eye closed and every head bowed, and Christians praying, if you've never been saved, if you've never been saved and trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, will you today... Like a go through the door, drink a glass of water, receive the free gift, make a step, and the light go on. It's all up to you. It all depends upon you. Will you this morning say yes to God? There's nothing wrong with Jesus Christ. Will you receive Him as your Lord and Savior today? Let's all stand. Take your hymnal and turn to page. 380. 380. Now we stood up to give you room. Thank you. To give you room to come out the aisle. Step out of the aisle. There's somebody that will pray with you at this altar. There's folks who will give you the scripture. There's folks who will show you how. How. Now come on. Come on. Come on. Now is the time. Why do you wait, dear brother? Oh, why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you a place in His sanctified throng. Why not, why not, why not come to Him now? Why not, why not, why not come to Him now? Why not? Why not? Free. Man, I can all the rest of my life, I cannot describe that undescribable gift, unspeakable gift, and everything that's involved. A new life, a new creature in Christ Jesus, a home in heaven, forgiveness of sins, all free for the asking. Won't you ask? If you've never asked him, how about right now? Let's see. Come on. What do you hope, dear brother, to gain by a further delay? There's no one to save you but Jesus. There's no other way but his way. Why not? Why not? Why not come to him now? Why not? Why not? I know why the why not. You're saying, I can't live it. God didn't ask you to live it. God asked you to receive His Son, Jesus Christ. He did not ask you to live it. You say, well, preacher, uh, uh, I, I just can't live it. He didn't ask you to. He asked you to receive His Son. He said, He that cometh to me, I shall in no wise cast out. In no eyes. That means he'll accept anybody that will come. Now, one more time. Come on. Do you not feel, dear brother, his spirit now striving within? Oh, why not accept his salvation and throw off your burden of sin? Why not? Why not? Why not come to Him now? Why not, why not, why not come to Him Thank you.
There's one here today, Lord, that comes to you as Lord and Savior. If you a burden in your heart, Lord, then come to salvation, Lord. Just pray for you. Uh, you come here today that you have a safe day and just watch over to the Lord separate ways. You have a strength. Amen. Lord bless you and you are a strength.